Hello everyone. Uh, today I want to talk about uh, migrating my JLSL setup to the new pop context. And first I want to explain how everything was structured um, before pop uh, using the classic JLSL top. In the beginning uh, we create the initial positions and initial uh, attributes for our simulation and in the top context uh, we have no other option but uh, to pack to put, uh, this data into a texture because it only uses uh, textures to work therefore um, we are limited to a size of uh, four components uh, per attribute uh, there is uh, RGBA, uh, red, green, blue, and uh, alpha channel. So for each uh, attribute, we need to create a, a separate texture, or as done here, uh, pack, uh, for example, the position, which is a vector with uh, three components, and uh, as the fourth uh, component, uh, add some float attribute, like uh, the particle size in this case. We pack this uh, into a single texture and uh, connect it to the JLSL top. Uh, there we uh, reassign these uh, attributes to some variables uh, that we use. And uh, if we need to get uh, feedback with uh, multiple textures, uh, meaning multiple attributes, um, we have to create a separate feedback loop for each one. Uh, connect it in, into the JLSL top and then work with uh, the inputs of our node. This all um, increases the load, we use uh, more texture reads, uh, which um, pardons uh, the system and uh, affects performance. Now let's see how this is structured in the new pop context. Okay, let me delete this. I'll just walk through this setup. So, um, to generate the points, um, we use a point generator. It can, uh, it can uh, generate points uh, in uh, various shapes, uh, a line, a torus, and so on. Uh, let's take a sphere. Uh, the number of points. I'll set it uh, to 5 for, for clarity. The pop context uh, has a convenient visualizer for all the points right away. In principle, the same could be done here in the top context, but uh, by representing uh, it as points, but in the pop context, uh, it's more convenient. To create um, an attribute, uh, we need to use uh, attribute node. Uh, by default, when we create points, uh, there are already uh, some attributes like position, normals. Uh, to read them, you can use the uh, pop2 node in that context. We drag it here, and here are our attributes. By default, we already have a position, which is recomponent vector and normals, and uh, the point index, which is simply the points number starting from zero. To create uh, an attribute, we use uh, this node. Here we can create any custom attributes, uh, meaning we, we can name it whatever we want, set its type, flow, double, vector, and direction, well, any type. We'll um, need velocity there, so let's use it uh, as a direction. Um, if you look at uh, what we've got, uh, here are our attributes. Uh, our custom float attribute. We can give it uh, some default value. Uh, see, it changes. And the same goes uh, for the vector attribute uh, with three components. 
you can set uh, any number of attributes here. I don't think uh, there is a limit. And in our simulation, um, I created, uh, right, we don't need this. I'll delete them. Zero for demonstration. Um, we need um, the velocity attribute, so we create it here as a vector with a direction, meaning this uh, vector will be normalized. Also, uh, color and particle size. Um, there are preset attribute names uh, here that you can use. Next. Uh, we use uh, random node uh, with which we can uh, configure our attributes. Here I've uh, slightly randomized uh, the initial particle size in set mode, which means uh, regardless of uh, the previous value, I'm just overwriting them here with um, uh, this range. Uh, the same goes for rotation, the turning of particles around their axis. We set this, uh, this range here. If you try um, to read it, uh, it will be uh, a bit slow because uh, there are a lot of points. There it's. Here are values. If we use a single random component, uh, one value is uh, use it for all. If not, uh, they uh, each get uh, their own random number for each component in uh, in this range. You can also add, multiply, and so on. And that's it. Uh, we have uh, arrived at, uh, at the beginning of uh, our feedback loop. So. With these four nodes, we have essentially replicated this setup, uh, but it's much cleaner, simpler, more understandable, and uh, we've uh, created uh, three attributes uh, here, uh, velocity, color, and uh, rotation. This is uh, in addition to the position, uh, which comes by default uh, from the point generator. So uh, we just with, with just one node, uh, we have uh, replaced this uh, entire chain. Now, uh, let's look at the codes uh, for these projects. I've uh, opened them uh, here side by side. On the left, uh, we have the JLSL top compute shader, and on the right, the pop version um, for the pop context. Um, the main differences lie in the fact that uh, some improvements have been introduced, for example, with uh, uniform variables. Uh, there is no longer a need to declare them uh, as before, where uh, every uniform variable had to be explicitly declared using the uniform tag, its size tag, uh, and, and the name you specify in the vectors uh, section here. In the JLSL pop, we have the same tab for vectors and uh, variables, but for each, uh, for each variable, um, you can explicitly specify the type and uh, it's uh, automatically imported. So I did this here just as uh, an example to maintain some visual identity, but you don't actually have to declare the variable at all. You can just use uh, its name as uh, it's written here. For example, UN, U, max speed. Uh, there is no need to use uh, the U prefix. I just did it to understand which variables are internal and which uh, ones come from this vector step. This is uh, very convenient, uh, speeds up uh, the process. You can just use the variable directly right away, and it will be declared in the format you specified here on this tab. So, okay, let's move on. Um, 
the rest of the code is completely identical, no no changes at all. Uh, we also declare our shared memory. Uh, the only thing is, um, I will explain the local group size uh, a bit later, maybe in a future tutorial. Uh, but otherwise, uh, the code is exactly the same. Uh, the Hladny functions uh, just copied completely identical functions. So uh, let's move to our void main. Uh, this is where uh, slight differences begin, but uh, but they also pretty much end here. Mm. Here we also declare an uh, ID for each particle uh, because I'm using a manual size of uh, number of dispatches. You have to you have to manually write how exactly we use them. Uh, otherwise, uh, if you use auto mode, uh, we can just use uh, the built-in variable uh, td uh, in index. Uh, it uh, simply sets uh, the point number as we as we saw here uh, in this date, uh, meaning uh, it in imports uh, this attribute but the logic uh, is the same uh, here we check uh, all the pixels in our texture and set a condition to not go beyond the texture size uh, to be limited by its dimensions uh, here uh, it's a bit simpler uh, we just use uh, built-in variable for for the number of points uh, on the first input and and we check this condition so that our ID doesn't exceed uh, the number of uh, these points and if here we used uh, textile fetch uh, which is reading uh, from texture using uh, ID here uh, we simply import attributes using the built-in function tdin uh, with the underscore and the attribute name. Um, to use um, all these attributes, we need to declare them uh, in the JLSL nodes uh, settings as uh, output uh, attributes, so we can write to them. Uh, therefore, uh, everything we need uh, on the output must be specified here. Otherwise, uh, they simply won't be visible to the node. We import our attributes, uh, position as a VEX3, uh, as recomponent vector, velocity as recomponent vector, size as a float attribute. It uses a particle ID and uh, the input number. You can use a second sort and so on. And we keep all the previous logic simply writing our data to the shared memory. Here's the position is a three component vector, mm, but I left it uh, uh, as to fully replicate the setup where we write the entire four component texture. Further on, the code is completely identical, no changes since we brought our variables uh, to the exact same format. Uh, we have position, velocity, size, uh, therefore the, the rest of the code is the same and the only difference is uh, in outputting our attributes. Uh, here we use the image store function to write our data to the texture using the ID and uh, well, our variables. Uh, here uh, we directly write this data into the attributes using the name of our uh, attributes uh, as uh, it was specified in the input, the particle ID and uh, finally the value. Basically these are uh, all the differences and the code ported this way works uh, perfectly as you can see uh, here 
um, there are two simulations. The top one is uh, top version. Uh, the bottom one is uh, pop version. And um, this data, um, if you middle click, here um, are all our attributes, position, color, normals, particle size, velocity, and so on. Um, we use them uh, in the exact same way for instancing our particles, uh, except uh, that the attributes are specified as a components. Uh, just, uh, just as we used uh, our textures uh, and uh, its components here, um, here we, uh, we, we use a sing single node to read all these uh, attributes and then uh, read them by, by component. Uh, so, position, uh, x, y, z, size is a float, uh, so we just put the same component everywhere. So, that's it. Uh, as you can see, uh, this setup is much simpler, takes up um, less space, and its basic parameters are just four nodes. And this has a very significant impact on more complex setup. Here we only have uh, three attributes, but if you have, we need five, six, seven, there, in the case of the texture version, the top context version, uh, it would be a very cumbersome structure. With these nodes for creating uh, all the attributes, uh, there would be many reads, many feedback loops. Uh, and here we fit into a single feedback loop and config uh, everything before it with uh, convenient nodes, random, and uh, of course there is noise and uh, all the others. Um, if you're familiar with uh, Houdini, uh, this picture will remind you a lot of the spreadsheet. Uh, where all attributes are presented in the same way, position, and any uh, mothers. Uh, therefore, uh, in general, we can we can say that Touch Designer has become a kind of uh, real-time version of Goudini. Uh, this is, this really uh, opens up uh, possibilities for us to create uh, particularly anything. Um, I will uh, demonstrate that. Uh, the setups are completely identical. There is a slight difference in color, simply because I didn't finish uh, working on uh, the particle rotation, but I think uh, you understand that uh, they are completely identical. The noises work the same, uh, everything is the same. So, that's it. Subscribe uh, to my Patreon. Um, there you can find the project files for this project and uh, and others. Um, I think that for particle simulations, I will only use the pop context from now, um, because um, besides the convenience, I've uh, noticed some some boost in performance. Uh, not significant, but uh, it's still there, and it should be used. Uh, that's all for now. Bye. See ya.